Ahoy, OTCers and penny stockers. I'm John Zadar. This is Tuesday, April 19th, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do is through the trading day, I come across penny stocks and OTC stocks that have got things going for them. They're running or they're gonna be running, and I like to share that information with you. Well, I found a few today that were running for obscure reasons and I want to share those with you because you're going to be able to use this to identify other runners in the future so let's go see what I found chopping first stock up on the chopping block is SNPW this is Sun Pacific Holdings and of course we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website simply because it's updated every day by FINRA and the SEC what's the point of searching through old information when all you want is what's current that's all they have here. So SNPW had news today. It was running. Had no news yesterday, but was running because there was news in the world that, well, affected it. And this is when it caught my eye was yesterday. But today, you couldn't help but notice it. So she finished today at 0 .013, just a little over a penny, perfect buy price. All this has to do is get to the next digit, two and you virtually doubled your money hit three you've tripled your money not a lot of travel distance when you buy on the one she had 54 percent gains today closer to 55 on the pink tier current verified profile and the transfer agent so it looks good look for these green ticks here this is information being verified by the otc markets in the background so when you see them come up you know everything's golden so what does this company do? Well, let me see. Sun Pacific Holdings Corp is a green energy company specializing in solar and waste to energy technologies. The company designs, develops, builds, and manages advanced green technologies that support renewable energy solutions. That is it in a nutshell. And if they're in business, they're making money, and we'll learn a little bit more about them as we look at this information. So as I said, there was news today. So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, she normally does just under 3 million. Today she did 50 million. So that's a huge kick there. You know, you're at about what, 17, 16 times her normal volume. Share structure, oh, not real great. Unrestricted shares, you can pretty much count on that being as close to the float as you're going to get a bullseye. We got just under a billion shares. Now, it does say float here, but most of the time, for some reason, it's normally, yep, <laughs> outdated or it just isn't right. So I just go straight to the unrestricted shares and that's as close as you really need to get. Financials, they making any money? Well, this is the annual. You got a half a million there, 289,000. I know it's those numbers because you got to put three zeros behind there. So there's $377,000 at Christmas for the whole year. Let's see what the quarterlies show. Well, it shows that last quarter they did $161,000. So they are making money. And since that was the last quarter we see here, there's another quarter due right now. It may even be out as a matter of fact. Let's go see. All right. Uh, there it is. Yep, there's the annual 415. So there is another one. I haven't jumped into it, so I don't know what their revenues are. If you're interested, there it is. Just click that little bad boy. And if you don't want to read the numbers in the blue and white, just scroll down to the paragraphs and they'll just tell you in words. All right, let's go take a look at the news then. All right, so most of their news is outdated. There's a big gap here. Look, we have 2019. That is the most recent news that the OTC market has. Now, thank goodness they brought in a couple pieces of news from the Globe Newswire online. And these are both from this year, January and today. But this is the reason, supposedly, that the stock was running yesterday. This is 2019, and they tell us that the company is working on a solar farm project in Durango, Mexico. Now, when this came up on my radar yesterday and I was trying to find the reason it was running, I couldn't find any catalyst here. So, of course, I ran over to Twitter. And this is what I found, a tweet from the company themselves, Sun Pacific Holdings, right there. And it came out yesterday. April 18th. And this says Mexican's president's contentious electricity overhaul defeated in Congress today. Many projects were on hold in Mexico in the renewable energy sector and also stalled our Durango project. I haven't found a lot of information about the Durango project. 
But there was all sorts of news yesterday about this bill down in Mexico. The president in Mexico wanted Mexican electricity to be what was bought first. If they ran out, you could go buy someone else's. And it was just, you know, defeating competition and all these other things. And it got knocked down in Congress. No way it passed. So that opened up the market for supplemental energies and green energies, renewable energies. So it helped this company. So they were running yesterday without any actual news. But I'm sure this tweet probably helped. So then we come down to the most current news. The news that came out in January, the company launched their new website to sell their Fox S inverter and energy storage. And this is their website here. There's their Fox inverter, uh, AC retrofit storage. They've got lots of different products here. It's a real good site. They've got lots of information, so they did a real good job on it. If you're really interested in what they do or what they sell, come on over here. And today's piece of news, the reason it's running today, Sun Pacific Holdings subsidiary, Sun Pacific Power Core, and IDN Solar Tech sign agreement to help build a U.S. solar panel facility to manufacture up to one gigawatts of solar panels per year, leading annual revenues to $450 million. I got to say, they don't leave a whole lot more to read in the news. And that is the catalyst right there. But let's take a look at that piece of news. So basically, you've got a joint venture here between the two companies, Sun Pacific Holdings and IST for short. And they're going to build a factory somewhere in the United States and start building solar panels. Good business, good timing. They tell us here that the project is currently in discussions with various states for the location and installation of the factory. This state-of-the-art processing will be done with local labor under the supervision and training from IST and will create cost-effective panels to boost the economy and job creation. They are also actively engaged in sourcing raw material and components and capital with an end goal to sell developers EPC in large-scale solar projects. Additionally, at this time, we are launching our OEM panel production in Indonesia, which is underway for our Sun Pacific power brand while we work at developing our USA factory. The factory is going to utilize 20 square meters. This is where they're going to be doing all their work. So you've got a factory that's going to be built somewhere in the USA, and they're already doing something over in Indonesia. And the company's in business. It's not a startup company. This is more like an add-on. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know what this company does with solar panels. I don't know if they have them and sell them, if they make them. I know they're working with a solar panel farm in Durango, Mexico. But are they doing all the other hardware except the solar panels? More DD is necessary. But there's your catalyst. Factory being built in the U.S., launch in Indonesia, and they're going to be making up to $450 million a year. And they're already doing business and making money. Let's go take a look at that chart, see what it looks like. All right, we've just followed the path and look where it brought us to Think or Swim, my free trading platform. This is where I do all my charting. If you need a trading platform, just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free account. They're not going to bug you for any money. Keep your account open and you can use TOS just like I am. So we are looking at SNPW, six month, four hour chart here. And I can see she's been under the 200 virtually all of the time. Did have a breakout here of about 200%, but this was in 2021. We didn't have any news for the entire year, so I don't know why this happened. Looks like it wanted to stay up there, but finally just fell away. We had a low bubble here a few days ago of 005. Our high bubble here is just about three cents. She recovered from that low bubble very quickly, but then continued back to her fall. And just here in the last couple of days, got real strong and has broke through the 200 day SMA. First time in a long time. All of the technicals look very strong on the four hour. Let's come on down to that 20 day one hour. She was on top of the 200 and then started losing it fast and just kept dropping, kept dropping, hit that low. As I said, she recovered very quickly from it, but kept falling until two days ago. This was when the Mexican president's bill got defeated, though there was no news specifically about this company or how it was affected. There was the tweet I showed you, and that's all I could find. So maybe just the one tweet got this thing to jump from, uh, looks to be, well, it actually opened up up here. So we went from about, 
0065 up to 0083. So that was about 30% gain just today. Nothing humongous, nothing giant. We started our day today at just at 008 and went all the way up to a high here. She climbed all day. Over a penny, 1.3. So we were looking at about 80% at her ultimate gain. And we finished today at 54%. So she looks pretty good. MACD is screaming. Look at that. I mean, it's just a rocket launch. There's not any give to it. Lots of green bars up there. Little bit of a pullback right there. Not much. We are in the fire for a long time on the RSI and we are high on the CCI. Up in the green, you got nothing to worry about. Coming down to that five day, five minute focus. Under the 200, all the way until the last two days. Yesterday is when she got her break. She got on top of that 200. You could see she bounced off at once. And then with the news today, she may have bounced off it a second time and maybe even came down back under it had there not been any news. But there was, so there you go. She jumped very quickly. She hit a high here of about, uh, oh, 1.3 cents. And remembering she came from 008, that is about 50% gains there, roughly. We're getting close to it. And what time did that happen? That came in there at, oh goodness, 9.40. 940. So that was real quick. In the first 20 minutes, she hit high, fell back pretty quick, made her recovery climb, but didn't get to a higher high. Nope, she's a little bit lower than her high, which gives you an indication she's probably going to go lower. If she didn't make a new high, made another low, she's going low. She came all the way down here, bounced off her 50. Thank goodness. I think it's the 50. Could be the 20. Got back up, shot across, Bounced off the 50 this time, so it's probably the 50. Launched up, hit a high bubble at the end of the day, and had just a little bit of activity after market. Fiam was very strong at the end of the day. MACD shooting up. RSI is into the low 60s, and the CCI is strong. This actually looks like it wants to continue moving in the morning. That's not to say it's going to run, but it doesn't look like it wants to take a dip. And it could keep on moving. This is a big deal. There's a lot of solar business out there. There's some strong solar companies that, well, they can't make as many as the world needs, as many as we need. So the market has opened up for a new factory. So I think this is a real good one. You may want to put SNPW on your list because this is an up and coming company. They've already got the hardware for the battery storage and the inverters. And now that they got another company that's going to build a factory where they're going to make solar panels in America. Yeah, made in America. That's what we need right? So I like this company, Sun Pacific Holdings. You may like it too. Now, do I think it's going to dip? You can always dip, folks. She took a big, strong run. She's up here. If she was to dip, she could come all the way down to just about a penny, about halfway, right? Just about a penny in this area. So she could dip down to a penny, but anything is possible. But consider the potential of a new solar panel factory in America with two companies joint venturing it together. That sounds pretty good to me. Let's go take a look at that next stock. Our next stock isn't even on the OTC market. No, this is a NASDAQ company, Sharps Technology, ticker STSS. They finished the day at $2.43 with 40% gains. Now keep in mind, any stock under $5 is a penny stock. Doesn't matter where they're sold. Could be the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, all good all penny stocks. So, Sharps Technology did have news today, but it isn't what I would call catalyst news, but there was value in it. And lots of people saw that value today, and lots of companies can run on this kind of news, though it doesn't stand out as being, as I said, catalyst news. So what does this company do? Well, being that they're a NASDAQ stock, we don't get a lot of information on the otcmarkets.com website. But if you jump over into a news press, they do give us some information there. Sharps Technology Inc. is a medical device company addressing global issues. Sharps Preventia is the company's premier line of smart safety syringes that eliminate accidental needle stick injuries, prevent needle reuse, and reduce wasted medicine and vaccines while retaining the intuitive simplicity of traditional syringes. So they make these newfangled, good, decent syringes. What was the relative volume around this non-catalytic news? Whoa, 
Wow. Well, maybe it was a catalyst after all. Gracious, they do 124,000 shares a day. Today, they did 108 million. Folks, that is 99 times her normal volume. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, I said it wasn't a catalyst. I guess it was. What is the share structure on this company? Bald spot, I was prepared for that. You come over here, they tell us that the outstanding shares is less than 10 million, 9.2 million. That's for everybody, the insiders and the management, the hedge funds, institutions, and me and you. What's left for me and you? Look at that, 5.5 million in the float. That is a tremendous low float on a NASDAQ stock with a company that is in business. So I am really excited about this float. You don't normally find a float that small in the NASDAQ. All right, what else can we learn over here? Financials, I don't think we're gonna get anything from our financials. No, that's the annual and there, and I don't even think we're gonna get disclosures here. We'd have to go diving around to get the information. Nope, not here. So what sort of news do we have? All right. We've got news, uh, three pieces of news here, one on the 14th and two today. Sharps Technology announces pricing of initial public offering. Now, this is important because it's the head to the tail of the news today. They put out a public offering. Uh, what was that? Today's the 19th, five days ago. Five days ago and today it closed. They're done. They sold all the shares. It's over. They're not selling anymore. Aegis Capital Corp acted as sole book runner on a $16 million initial public offering for Sharps Technology. Let's take a look at that news. So we read here that Sharps Technology Inc., an innovative medical device company offering patented best-in-class single-use smart safety syringe products, today announced the closing of its initial public offering of 3.7 million units at a price of $4.25. Now a unit is a package. You get a share of stock and you get a warrant, although theirs is a wee bit different. Each unit of ours consists of one share of common stock and two warrants to purchase one share of stock with each for an exercise price of $4.25. Now what that means is you're going to get a share of stock which you can buy and sell anytime you want. The warrants which are also stock that you can sell anytime you want but if you hang on to them they're also vouchers. They're like coupons. They're normally good for like five years and any time between now and the end of five years you're going to be allowed to buy a share of this stock which is currently at $2.43 for $4.25. Well, in three years from now, this company could be up to $30. You're gonna be able to buy a share for $4.25 and then turn around and sell it that same day and get all that profit. Absolutely, and that's why people like warrants. And this is giving you two warrants. So there is a price for these warrants. A lot of times you'll see a SPAC the share is $10, the unit is $11.50. That means the warrant was $1.50. I don't know what their warrants are priced at, but the price up here at $243, before the 40% was added on, everyone sees that $425, and they're doing the math in their head too. How much are these warrants worth? How much is it? And they see that this should probably be up near $3. Somewhere around there probably is what the stock is worth. So seeing that all these units got sold, everybody wanted them and it sold in five days. Folks, I have seen public offerings last a year. They put out so many shares to sell to everybody and they'll sell them at a higher price. You just can't get them sold. They're just not selling. These sold in five days. So there was a lot of excitement around this. People saw others buying them at a higher price, wanting the warrants. So it jumped today. Let's go see what the chart looks like. Well, this is really interesting. This is STSS, but it's not a six month, four hour chart. I can't show you six months, four hour because there's not six months of trading. Honestly, I can't even show you one hour, 20 days of trading. This is five days of trading that you're looking at and that's all there is. I can look at a full year. There's only five days of trading. And I have no answers for this. This isn't on the OTC market coming from the expert. This is on the NASDAQ. So I honestly don't know. It's a surprise to me jumping over here and seeing it. So what we see is what we've got. We hit a low bubble here yesterday. 
and today when the day started before the bell but when the market did open we were at a dollar 75 and it went up to three dollars and 20 cents you're looking at roughly 80 percent gain right there that's in an hour let's come down to that five day five minute that'll probably tell us a little bit more all right we can see we have no volume there is just absolutely nothing to see down here until the news that came out today which really wasn't news right it was information but the truth of the matter is most people don't like public offerings because they're selling more shares which means you're diluting the shares you're adding more we had 5.5 million in the float they just sold 3.7 million units well that's 3.7 million more shares so the float has just jumped from 5.5 to 9.2 million then each one of those units that came with a share has two warrants in it so there's another uh, 7.4 million that will be converted at some date and time so that's gonna push the float up even higher up to about 16 million so that's why people don't like it what they did like is that they were sold quick it happened very quickly and you normally see a lot of these stocks will jump once a public offering ceases and ends and they can last a long time they can last a year this one ended in five days pretty quick so we had that big jump right there she came down to the 10 took another big jump right at the bell and what time did it hit that high that was uh 10 minutes to 10. so in 20 minutes she cracked up to this high fell down the rest of the day right back down to the 200 which just came into the picture it was playing up to the 50. you can see that here then it took off forgot the 50 and came down to the 200 and is under the 200 right now the macd looks to be trying to recover rsi is tempted in the center as is the cci so she doesn't show a lot of push right now but the point of me showing this to you is public offerings have a big effect on a stock. People don't like them when they start. The stock price can definitely fall once a public offering begins. When they end, lots of stocks jump. Even if there's not a big extra value built into it, a lot of them will jump just because finally it's done. And if they are selling those shares at a much higher rate than the going rate you can normally see the price rise just under whatever they were selling those shares for in a public offering so keep your eye out for public offerings if the price is real low compared to the price they're selling those shares at you can normally see a push up to that area and grab all those gains all right let's go take a look at the last stock i got last stock on the block is krfg no, not Kentucky Fried Chicken. King Resources finished the day at 002, 53% gains. They're on the pink tier and current and got all their green ticks over there, so they look real good. They are a self proclaimed shell company. They're not doing any business. They have no revenues to report, and everybody knows that. We're waiting for something to happen. And normally, about now, I'd say something's happening but it's not not this time there is no news to give us a catalyst there are no disclosures but there was a catalyst today very obscure and I'll share that with you here in just a minute now this is a Chinese company out of Hong Kong so if that means anything to you what was the relative volume around the company today well she was doing 5.8 million shares a day today she did 27 million so you've got about mm, five times four times as much share structure our float is high oh boy another 1 billion shares here folks so nothing there to brag about we've got no money coming in and there are no disclosures and as I said there is no news so the only catalyst I found was over at Twitter these people over there are looking at all sorts of things and some people have subscriptions to companies that can get information that isn't put out there for everybody to easily see and this is one of them the company changed today from alternative reporting standard to u.s reporting sec reporting this here alternative reporting standard that's the bottom i mean the absolute bottom you must do this this kind of reporting but it's not very good this is much better and that's all that changed today that's it they have gone to a better reporting so that information coming from them is more transparent and that's what most people want in their company is to be transparent and that is it there is nothing else to show you except they went from alternative to u.s reporting sec reporting ta-da so let's go see what that chart looks like 
KRFG six month four hour chart most of it under the 200 day SMA we got a high bubble way back here of 2.2 cents and a low bubble here of 0012 that's about 20,000 percent difference between the two bubbles and she hit that low bubble just a couple days ago and that 53 percent gain we got today hardly registers on this chart let's come down to that 20 day one hour view all right, we see that she was hanging on to the 50-day SMA here with the 200 coming down fast. And I would have expected this, as soon as it got close like this, to make a stretch and jump for it and get on top. But it went exactly the opposite. It repelled it, pushed it further down, hit this low bubble, and then she started to come back. Technicals look pretty strong on the hourly. Let's come down to that five-minute, five-day. Well, that is back to the 11th, and I'm not sure what all these white lines are in here for. This is today. All of that from there is today. And you can see she has been growing steadily all day long, right up until, what is that, 1.30 in the afternoon. Wow, that was a long climb. Lots of time to get in. She crossed all of her SMAs. She's sitting on the 10-day SMA coming up. And even when she quit climbing, she was sitting on the 10-day SMA and it looked like she was waiting for the 20. Waiting for that 20. That's what happens when you see a stock going sideways. Instead of falling to test the 20, it waits for the 20 to come up, give it a tag, and take back off or whatever SMA is underneath it. So this looks pretty good. This looks very good. We got that bank right there coming back up rsi is just about 60 cci is into the green now pointing up this looks good folks there isn't a lot of catalyst no it was an obscure catalyst the company is a shell company they could have a deal at any moment but who knows there's no news they haven't told us about anything we don't see anything happening it's just deathly quiet all we know is that they've changed the way they're going to report and they're going to become more transparent and maybe that is just getting things ready for what's about to happen so not that i expect this to do any more running Although you never can tell with these obscure catalysts, you may want to put KRFG on your watch list for when this Chinese company does something. They can surprise us sometimes. You also may want to keep this around when any news comes out about China that's good and all Chinese stocks are running. You've got one here that could possibly run. It's a Chinese stock that you now know. KRFG. So there you got three companies. All of them had lots of trades today, over 100 trades each. All of them had gains today, but not all of them had obvious catalysts. Now, of course, the first one did with their solar factory. Boom, that was big. But yesterday, the news about Mexico, not so apparent, very obscure. But the stock did go 30% on that news, even though it had nothing to do with them. The tweet made it apparent that the company was going to benefit from it. That's why I like going to Twitter. You get information you just can't find anywhere else. Wasn't in a news press. Then these other two companies we looked at, one was about a public offering and the other one just changed the way it's going to be filing. Well, not types of news we would normally consider catalysts, but look, they ran. So consider all the information about a stock. When something changes with the company, you never know how it's going to be received by the investors or traders. So keep up with the information, keep up with your DD. Everything you know may come into play at some point in time. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See you, folks.